Alan Finkel, welcome to National Wrap. Pleasure to be here, Patricia. The Prime Minister says we will meet our Paris targets in a canter. Do you agree with that assessment? Look, meeting the Paris targets across the whole of the economy, I think, will take effort. Even a cantering horse, of course, is ex exerting effort. Um, the the reason that I feel that we can is on the assumption that we adopt some of the policies that have already been recommended. So in the Finkel review, the so-called Finkel review into the national electricity market, one of our specific recommendations, which was accepted, was that by the end of 2020, the federal government should develop a whole of economy emissions reduction strategy out to 2050. And on the assumption that that will go ahead and appropriate uh, pr procedures are put in place through that, then I think that we can. OK, but we don't have that. In fact, the no. government has rejected that. So based on what we know now, announced policies as we know them now, will we meet it? No, the government has not rejected that. So the government rejected one recommendation. It's a pretty Finkel crucial review, part of it, though. But that was the orderly transition for the electricity sector. And the electricity sector is doing better than any other sector. The real problems that we face are in transport, in what's called direct combustion, heating our houses and our hot water and cooking, uh, and in agriculture. That's the whole of economy mm. that was referred to in the Finkel review in recommendation 3.1, yeah. which was to develop a whole of economy emissions reduction plan by the end of 2020. And that is still on track. OK, but on that crucial part, which became the National Energy Guarantee, that's now fallen apart. All leading scientists in this country, and you're the chief scientist, are saying we cannot meet our target. We cannot meet it on the current trajectory. So I'm not disagreeing, but I do need to pick apart the question. The target can be interpreted two ways. One is the electricity sector, and the other is the whole of the economy. I think we can meet the 26% reduction in the electricity sector, but that is insufficient because transport is going up agriculture sort of hovers around where it was. Okay, so let's not play tricky words. I'm not suggesting, but really, no, so the national, means... what, what I'm saying is the National Energy Guarantee by itself would not have solved the whole of the economy problem in any event. We need to have more grunt behind what we're doing as intended through the recommendation to develop a whole of economy emissions reduction strategy in, by the end of 2020 going out to 2050. And I can't presuppose what the elements of that will be, but it's an important thing to do. OK, so you can't presuppose it on what we currently know. Are you concerned that we're not going to get there then? I'm concerned that in sectors such as transport uh, and agriculture and direct combustion, if we don't do things differently, they're going to stay relatively high compared to where we need to be by 2030. OK, so is there a sense of urgency around this? There is a sense of urgency. I don't think that we have to be attacking everything full pelt today, but 2020 is only two years out from now. I would is. like to think that by the end of 2020, we know what we are going to do to get to our targets for 2030. So you think we've got till the end of 2020, realistically? Yes, I mean, the earlier you start, the more challenging a pro uh, problem, the earlier you start, the better. But we haven't. Will the loss of two years out of the next 12 mean a black and white difference between whether we achieve or don't achieve? No, I don't. It just means that when we do get started, we need a steeper trajectory. All right, so let's get to the industry solution because the industry is developing a non-governmental response. That's what they say is needed. In fact, the BCA is back that. Do yes. you back that approach? But that non-governmental response would be in the electricity sector. And do you back that, that, well, I think that, that we... alternative architecture, the industry just getting on and doing it? <laughs> It, it depends what they're going to attack and it's not clear yet. We need to attack reliability. There are two aspects to the NEG, reliability and emissions reduction. As it happens, because of a variety of initiatives that have been going on for a number of years, we are doing pretty well on the emissions reduction. Not ideally, but we're doing pretty well. But unless we either adopt and actually activate the 49 recommendations other than the orderly transition in the Finkel review or the NEG, we're going to struggle I think, with reliability going forward into the, the 2020s. So in your view, is the NEG too complicated? The NEG is complicated. There's is it no too complicated to uh, adopt? No, because Labor's too... thinking about adopting it. It's the government too... said no. Well, again, it depends which part of the NEG you're talking about. So there's the NEG for reliability and the NEG for emissions reduction. Um, is it too complicated for reliability? It's more complicated than perhaps other solutions, but it's workable. 
Is it too complex for the emissions reduction? I think that it's probably more complex than it needs to be for emissions reduction. Certainly the orderly transition in the Finkel Review mm -hmm. is a much simpler way of achieving the reduction of atmospheric emissions. So you're asking the government to revisit that approach then? Well, I recommended that approach because I and my colleagues genuinely thought it was the most effective way forward. And we did a lot of modelling. Modelling can't be conf confidently relied upon from the point of view of predicting a particular exact outcome numerically, but it's quite good for looking at things in comparison to each other. And we didn't have a neg to compare to, but we did model a number of different scenarios mm -hmm. and the orderly transition from the Finkel review was the most cost effective and simple, simultaneously okay. cost effective and simple way to get there. Alright, so back to that because the government rejected that element on the reduction of the emissions part of the Finkel review. Labor is now thinking about the National Energy Guarantee as a potential architecture to deal with with emissions. Are you going to Labor and saying you should instead consider the Finkel's answer to this on an emissions intensity scheme? Uh, not at all. I give my advice to the government of the day. I'm not a you know, behold so you to one party or the other. What, what would you suggest, though? Because I either, would, either could be I would government I would by May next that year. they have to look at doing something. Um, there are reasons to choose one or the other. My two years ago or one year ago recommendation was the orderly transition in the Finkel review the neg is an alternative strategically it covers it joins exactly the same dots um, it doesn't have a long-term trajectory in terms of going out for the next 50 years in the way the Finkel review did and it doesn't have a simple mechanism such as the clean energy target in the way the Finkel review did but it's workable and if it can get up if the states will embrace it uh, I think it's, it's certainly better than not having something strategic going forward. The government's also floated the possibility of a royal commission if, of course, uh, we see prices go up in the electricity sector. Consumers have to pay more if they do. They say they'll consider it. Do you think a royal commission might be necessary now? Oh, look, I think the electricity sector is, is it's a complex market. So does it Even without the need, it's a complex market. Um, and like in any market, the various players are trying to maximise their position. Um, I'm not aware personally of any behaviour that would warrant a Royal Commission. Mind you, I wasn't aware of any behaviour in the banking sector that would warrant a Royal Commission. Um, so there is a necessity for improvements in the way the market operates. And we called out some of those in the Finkel Review and others have been called out by the ACCC. But we've seen the power of a Royal Commission. It's like nothing else that we can do as a country. Correct. Does that mean that perhaps if we did go down that road, it would have the potential to, to improve the sector in a way that nothing else could? If, if the problem of high prices was purely because of misbehaviour, then some sort of investigation like that that stamped out the misbehaviour um, would you know, have some value. But the electricity sector is much more complex. The problems are inherent in the nature of the way the competition works, the uh, overconstruction of poles and wires, the return to the, the legislated rates of return to the people that run the transmission systems, the nature of the competition, the, the way that uh, variable renew en renewable energy, solar and wind plays off against constant output coal. It's complex. I think that if a commission of some kind went in just to see where the bad behaviour was and stamp it out, well, they might stamp out the ba bad behaviour, but I'm not sure that that would improve the system one iota. Alan Finkel, thanks so much for your time. Patricia, pleasure.